Welcome to module two, video number one of the SEO Accelerator course. In this video, we're gonna talk about keyword research, specifically what is it and how exactly does this thing work? Started with the absolute basics. What are keywords? Well, keywords are the words or phrases that people write, i.e. search, inside of search engines. Really, really simple. So if my editor here was to go to Google and search for pink fluffy elephants, then your keyword is pink fluffy elephants. Or if you to go and search for dealing with an annoying boss, then that is your keyword. Or another example, video editing jobs, then that again, that is another keywords. Now every campaign begins with selecting these keywords. It's extremely important that you select the right keywords. In fact, selecting the wrong keywords is kind of like starting a race in the wrong direction. It's a complete utter waste of your time. So the process of selecting those keywords is what we call keyword research. And if you put a definition behind this, it's basically the process of identifying the best keywords for your web page or for your website. Now to do that, there's a few different elements you wanna look at. I want to simplify this again and give you a simple formula I call VRI, which is volume, relevance, and intent as you're looking at right here. Now, realistically, you need all three of these. Let me explain why. Most people look at this example only here, which is relevance and volume. And they're thinking, okay, the keyword is about this topic and there's, there's 10,000, there's 50,000, there's a ton of searches every month for this. And really that gives you usually a list of high traffic keywords with low volume that realistically you probably can't rank with, right? And that's because it's not taken into account what we call intent, which is kind of the buzzword in SEO since last year, but actually it's a very, very fundamental part of SEO. And that's simply understanding Understanding what exactly is the intentions of someone searching for this keyword. When you combine all of them, again, VRI, volume, relevance, and intent, that is the perfect keywords for your page and for your website to basically reach the perfect audience. It's not necessarily the highest search volume, it's combining the highest search volume with what's relevant and what is the best intent for what you're trying to achieve with that specific page and really even overall as a business strategy. Now, before we dive into the actual process, let's cover a few things real quick. The first thing is common lingo, and that's gonna be your types of keywords. There are three types of keywords, there's head, body and a long tail. Head keywords consist of a single word like SEO. Body keywords consist of, you know, two or three words like keto diet tips or something similar to that. And long tail keywords consist of four or more words. Now what is absolutely fascinating is that in most cases, the long tail keywords end up driving more traffic simply because there are so many of them. There's so many of them and while the search volume is lower, it tends to add up significantly over time. But don't worry about that. We're gonna get into the whole process of targeting keywords in the actual process stage of it. Beyond that, there's also tools that you're gonna need at this point. There's additional tools which may help. Here's two that I absolutely recommend that you need. Number one is a rank tracker for tracking specific keywords as a KPI just to see how well you're performing against those main focus keywords. And a second tool you're gonna need is something like SEMrush or Ahrefs that allows you to basically look up the rankings for your existing site and ideally competitors also. So you can type in their website and just get a whole list of keywords that they're ranking for. Now again, don't worry if you don't know what this means because I can explain exactly how to use these tools also as we get further into the training. Now beyond that, getting into the actual process, there are seven steps that I'd like to walk you through and I'm gonna go through every step step by step so you go from not knowing keyword research at all to having a list of keywords for every single one of your pages and it's actually quite a simple process but we're going to get pretty strategic in really analyzing what the best keywords are and go through this entire process again step by step starting off with step number one is to check the existing rankings. This is extremely easy to do. What it involves is you open up Ahrefs and you go over to the organic keywords tool. From there, you basically can see a whole list of every single one of the keywords that your website is ranking for. In this case, this is obviously just my blog. Uh, you can see a few different examples here. Obviously, PBN being the biggest keyword with 4,700 searches a month and a pretty poor position number 11. Granted, I don't do SEO for this site whatsoever, but it basically gives you a whole list of keywords that you 
you're currently ranking for. Now, as we'll get into, you can also repeat the same for competitors, but let me show you one other example real quick. Let's say, for example, we have an e-commerce site. Again, the same process, organic keywords. And from there, what you can also do is filter these keywords out, right? So if we're just focusing on what we call bottom of funnel, as in pages that actually drive revenue directly, then we can go ahead and you can see here they have slash blogs here. We can go ahead and type in blogs and just go ahead and exclude that from the URL. And that's going to bring it down from 3,700 keywords to when it loads for me to now 2,190 keywords. You can also do a little bit exclusion in terms of brand names, anything like that. But basically, you can see here, this brings it down to which keywords are actually being ranked on the homepage, category pages, and product pages, which is more in line with what you want to do for e-commerce. And for an affiliate site or something, you can also type in, say, review here or best, and basically filter based on what is included in review or best in the keyword. Very, very simple process. This basically allows you to get a list of the keywords that you're currently ranking for that actually matter. So again, we're not wasting any time in the future when we're analyzing all these keywords. But these tools make it really simple to get a list of all your rankings. This wasn't around when I started SEO. It makes the whole process significantly easier. Step number two is to identify two to three competitors that we can look further into. There's two tools I recommend using here. Number one is your brain. And if you know your business, you know your website, you know your niche, then you could probably think of some competitors pretty easily. In fact, for most of our clients, we just ask them and they give us a list that we look into further. But beyond that, there is also Google search, right? You can just literally go ahead and Google for keywords relevant to your business and just find a whole bunch of different competitors. Now, that part is relatively simple, but let me again open up Ahrefs, my tool of choice, and explain what it actually means to choose a competitor and what you should really be looking for. Because yes, they need to be a similar business. That part is easy, but it's an SEO factor to consider also. So you can see here, I've done a search for Jim Leggins in Ahrefs' Keyword Explorer tool. There's 15,000 searches every single month for this keyword. If I scroll down a little bit, you'll see basically the top 10 ranking websites. Now, what can we determine from this instantly, just within seconds of looking at this page? Well, the most important factor, I believe, is this thing called DR, which stands for Domain Rating. It's a metric from basically zero to 100 that measures how much of an authority this overall domain, this overall website is. Now, does this mean anything? It's hard to say, but what we can definitely determine is that if the average ranking website is, say, 86, 73, 70, so in the region of 70s, it's probably going to be quite a competitive keyword. Now, if you look here very, very closely, there is one website that absolutely stands out here. It's Pursue Fitness. They're a domain rating of 33, and they are on the first page, and that is definitely a good sign if you have a website that is, say, domain rating 30 to 40 or so, that, hey, there is someone actually ranking on this page despite being that lower domain rating. But essentially, when you're analyzing these competitors, what you're looking for is websites that are of a similar level to you. Meaning that if you are, say, a domain rating of 30, and Pursue Fitness here are 33, well, they're a good competitor to analyze. However, if you are a domain rating of 30, then looking at ASOS or JD Sports or Matalan or Gymshark is absolutely the worst possible competitors to analyze because just because they're doing something and they're ranking for a keyword doesn't mean you can, okay? So all we're doing here is trying to identify competitors that we can actually compete against, then we can measure their keywords, and then we can basically copy what is actually working for them because they're a similar size to us. Moving on to step number two, once you've identified who those competitors are, again, two to three of them that are a similar domain rating to you, what you then want to do is, again, check their keywords. Now, you can do that by, again, using the organic keywords tool and basically just look at up their keywords. Now, what I've done here to make this even more effective and just to save time later is I've gone ahead and filtered out blogs on this e-commerce example. And I've done an affiliate example here where I've, I've typed in best. And let's do one more and let's type in review. And you can basically just filter down by keywords that contain these. You can also type in versus as one more example there. So what we're doing is immediately just filtering down those keywords. You can see here, now these are actually review pages like best tactical shotgun, best gas mask, best survival lighter, and, and so on. These are actual keywords that we intend to rank for, and it actually could make money as, again, an affiliate site. 
Now, once you have this list, you can try and filter these down further if you can. But once you've got it already, all you do is go ahead and click export, and then you do a full export, or just export all of these records. And this is essentially the first stage of our keyword research, which is just downloading and exporting all of this data. So at this point, we have our own site and two to three competitors all exported as a huge list of keywords that I can go after. At that point, then we're going to, okay, how do we actually use all this data? Now, after you've got all this data based on your own website and your competitors, that's usually enough. But if you do want to do some additional research, then that's perfectly fine. Also, maybe your competitors don't sell exactly the same products as you. So this is really, really simple to do. You can use number one, again, your brain, because you know your niche, you know your business, and you can just think about this. And then again, a tool like SEMrush or Ahrefs again. Now, let me explain how this works. Again, I go to Ahrefs, I'm using a keyword explorer tool. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to think about, okay, what is a keyword? that someone is going to search to find my type of products. Let's just do gym leggings again. So again, I just type in gym leggings as a guess, and that has 15,000 searches a month, so I actually guessed the correct thing. But I could also type in some different variations just to try and guess, right? And I can already see here, they have recommendations here, women's gym leggings, 2,500 searches a month, high-waisted gym leggings, 1,900 searches a month, and so on, right? But if I'm wrong, I could also type in leggings for gym, just an example, just to try something out, see what happens. And you can see here that, yeah, there's only 60 searches a month for this. However, they recommend the parent topic here, search for 15,000, which is the one we found previously. So just by typing some different things in and just get an idea of what is the search volume here, it's gonna give you a pretty good idea really, really quickly just by doing manual research of what those best keywords are. And this is, again, just using your brain, do a little bit of thinking, and if you know your business, you know your products, you know your services, then you can kind of get an idea manually just by typing things in and just kind of guessing. And really, I try and get everything done with the competitors, but if it can't be done, this is an additional option to try and add some additional keywords. Now that you have this huge list of keywords, we need to clean up this list so we can actually analyze it. It's very, very simple to do this. You're gonna use your own intuition, your own skill, your own knowledge of your business and your target audience. And then you're gonna use a tool like Google Sheets to again, just remove duplicates and clean up this whole list really, really easily. So let me show you how this works. I picked out a few competitors as an example. I picked out my own site, of course, and I picked out just two competitors to make this easy. Gotch SEO and Diggity Marketing, both SEO blogs. Are they really competitors? No, because I don't want to rank for a bunch of stuff. But if I did, then there's some examples of sites that I'd look at. Now, again, all I'm going to do is go ahead and export these. I'll just do a quick export 1,000 rows because I don't actually need this data. It's just an example. And then I'll repeat this for the other competitors as well. So Diggity Marketing, and then go over to Gotch SEO, and then repeat the same process once again. So as you can see here, these are all being downloaded. And you can see here the amount of keywords there are. So 6,000 for Gotch SEO, 6,000 for Diggity, and 500 for mine. It's over 12,000 keywords, which is just too much to analyze properly, and many of them may be duplicates. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to Spreadsheet again, and we've got a brand new open spreadsheet on Google Sheets, and all we're gonna do is import that data. So file, import, we're gonna hit the upload, and then we're gonna go ahead and just drag them in. And once this is uploaded, it should take a few seconds for mine because it's a very small number of data. We're gonna go ahead and click this, replace data as selected cell, import. And that's it. And then we repeat the same process again, file, import, upload, and then go ahead, diggity marketing. And we're gonna click append to current sheet. It's gonna add it at the bottom of the sheet. Very simple. Repeat that process again, file, import, and just do it for the other competitor now. Upload, drag that up there, and again, append to current sheet, done. So what that gives us there is a huge list of keywords. You can see here there's 2,500 because obviously I only did the quick exports, just a ton of data here. Now, in many cases, a lot of these are just gonna be duplicates. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna view, and we're gonna freeze one row, which is this header row here. And then we'll go over to position column, which is column C, right click at the top here and just sort A to Z. What it's gonna do is have the smallest positions first and then the, the worst ones further down. These two rows at the bottom can also be deleted, but we'll do this anyway. And then from there, we'll go to data and then remove duplicates. And that's gonna automatically remove all the duplicates. Select data has header row, and it's gonna show you here the list of them. And it's like column B, which is the keyword column, which is gonna remove duplicate keywords. Click remove duplicates, and that's gonna go ahead and remove 448 duplicate rows, which again reduces that data. Now beyond that, we can also do some manual inspection if you want to, but I don't think we really need to in this case. But for example, if we wanted to go through this and we wanted to add filters here, for example, if you go ahead and filter this column, we can type in uh, contains, for example, text contains, and let's type in diggity, which is one of the sites. 
And then we can just go ahead and delete these keywords because we probably don't want to rank for that on our own site. We can do additional filters there based on if we want to do like best, which is like affiliate type keywords, and then we can go ahead and find them or we can do the opposite and said text does not contain best. So maybe you only want to rank for keywords that contain best or review. So here's a list that don't contain best. If you wanted to, we could just go ahead and just delete all of these or delete some of them or anything like that. We can also filter based on positions. So we can go into the position one, click filter greater than or equal to 50, click OK. You're not going to filter out all the keywords that are position 50 or above. If you wanted to, we could then go into these and just select them all and again, just delete those records. And basically, we're just reducing these keywords down to keywords that we're actually intending on ranking for. Go ahead, click None now. And that's going to give us a list now. We delete a few, but just a quick example. That gives us 1,900 as opposed to 2,500 initially. And that's basically the process of cleaning up keywords. A lot of this is kind of intuition and manual, just researching through these, looking through them and saying, OK, H1, do we really want to rank for H1? Well, possibly, because we, we teach SEO. So maybe, but that's basically all it is. You do the initial filter it inside of Ahrefs before you export, and then you do additional export in here. Once you have this data, for example, what can you do with iMovie? We don't want to do that, so we can just remove this, right? So just so on, let's just quickly clean it up that whole sheet before we go ahead and process this and actually use these keywords to determine which pages we're going to rank for them in the next steps. Now, at this phase, we've basically covered steps one through five, which is check your existing rankings, identify two to three competitors, check those competitors' rankings, manually research additional keywords optionally, and then clean that keyword list. At this point, we have that big list of keywords. Now we need to actually start utilizing that as part of our keyword research strategy, which goes into keyword mapping and different steps like that. However, we really don't have time to do all that in this video because those are massive topics in and of themselves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this hidden step six and seven, and we're gonna come back to that in the next two videos. So that wraps up this one. If this course is helpful to you so far, please do me a favor, click the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and that is all I have for you in this video. I'll see you in the next one. I'll see you there.